Hello and welcome to my first solo recording experience. Today we're going to be playing a DS game from 2006 called Magical Star Sign. Uh, I apologize in for advance for the weird aspect ratio. Uh, DS games are kind of stupid. There isn't really a way around that. Uh, and this is one of those uh, semi-early DS games that went really hard in uh, the touchscreen technology. So you can actually play the whole game with the stylus. So I'm going to have my mouse cursor being shown because that'll make everything more transparent for everybody. Now, I played this game when I was in middle school, like right when it came out. And I don't really trust my middle school self anymore, so I have no idea if this deck or this game is actually any good. So we're gonna find out together. Let's see. Light, uh, I can cast healing magic. Dark, it's harder, but I can steal HP. Well, that sounds edgy and fun, so I'm gonna do that one. I guess our personality is defined by our gender in this, since I can either be fearless or mysterious, but. I don't know. Mysterious lines up better with my dark magic, so I'll be the girl. Uh, and I am a huge nerd who likes some series of books a lot more than others, so I'm gonna name my female character Lyra because that's my favorite book and my favorite character, so I'm gonna go with that like I always do. Is this correct? Uh, I guess. It's kind of funny that it shows me, like, my base stats, because... I don't get to choose those. So, yeah, I guess this is correct. Uh, one funny thing about playing games this way is obviously on an actual DS, there's like a big break right here. And so I could like, it's very easy to realize that you're not clicking on the right screen, but here the break isn't clean. And so I keep finding myself clicking on things that are like right about there and it doesn't work because that's not a touch screen. Anywho, uh, it looks like I could choose to manually rename my party, but I don't feel like doing that. So we're going to go with their default names. Okay. Ooh, there's that break I was talking about. Uh, these types of things look much better with about a quarter inch of plastic right there. Ooh. Oh, well. Uh, looks like we're in a big, goofy fantasy castle. And we are in a classroom. Uh, the aesthetic of this place reminds me of, like, the candy racing game from Wreck-It Ralph. Because everything's, like, light blue and purple and pink and goofy looking. Anywho, let's get into the game. Hey, Lyra. Where's Miss Madeline? Class should have started by now. Do you think something happened to her? Calm down. She's just late. It happens all the time. She's probably just finishing up her lesson plan. Anyway, it's nothing to get so worked up about. Sheesh. What is this, the 30th time this year? When someone's... G When's someone gonna give her a tardy slip? That's what I want to know. I see her. She's coming. Quick, everyone get back to your seats. Come on, unruly children. It's time for class. Oh, she has a lot of hair. Good morning, apprentices. I'm sure you are all quietly studying your spellbooks while you are waiting for me. Uh, maybe not. Miss Madeline, you must be aware that you are late for class again. Probably not going to do a full robot voice the whole time, because that will be cheesy and lame, but maybe when I feel like it. Yeah, what's up with that? You're late all the time, but when I forget my homework, who gets detention? Me. That's who. If I get held back again this year, I'm holding you personally responsible. And he kind of has a point. If the teacher keeps showing up for class and then you're not learning everything you need to know, kind of her fault, maybe a little. Oh, ho, ho. I'm so sorry, my little students. I'll never be late again. I promise. Mm. <laughs> oh, poor Moe Sensei. We made her cry. Our story begins on the small planet of Kovomaka, on a quaint and remote edge of the Baklava solar system. This solar system contains many unusual planets, all home to their own unique civilizations. 
To the many people who live on Kovamaka, stories of other planets may as well be nothing more than fairy tales. But not for long. Ooh, foreboding. Or maybe not foreboding, just foreshadowing. Hot-headed Pico, a student of fire magic, thinks he's a born leader. His temper, however, says otherwise. Cool and sometimes a little aloof, Sorbet uses her water magic to show off her sparkling intelligence. Found in a curiosity shop by Principal Biscotti, Maka is a dry and deadpan robot who wields powerful earth magic. The impetuous and willful Chai is an odd salamander who draws upon the magical power of the forest. Okay, time out. It's like, they could have chosen any reptile or non-mammalian species they wanted to have their non-human, like, uh, forest magic user. But why a salamander specifically? Like, those lizards are very mythologically tied to fire. Like, they even gave him, like, the red and stuff as if they, like, got halfway through deciding that, yep, the salamander should be a fire mage, and then just not. Okay, whatever. The floppy-eared and flighty lassie is a scatterbrained bunny able to call upon the magic of the winds. Last, but not least, there's Lyra, a student of dark magic, whose charisma holds this ragtag group together. Whenever I'm in a group, we always rally behind whoever has the power of darkness. These six Academy classmates are about to set off on an adventure unlike any seen on their world, or any other. Ooh. Apparently the whole world has this very, like, bright pink candy aesthetic. Shh! I can hear the principal talking to Miss Madeline! He sounds really serious, too. Maybe she is getting fired for being late to class 30 times in a row? Just a guess. What's going on? Hmm, I wonder what they're talking about. Miss Madeline, you are the only person I can trust with this delicate matter. I'm afraid there's simply no other way. Leave your students in my care. We will await your return. But to the wind planet? Really? Are you sure this is a good idea? Quite sure, Miss Madeline. I need your help in dealing with a very troublesome wizard on Puffoon. Is that so? It, I like how when it said Wind Planet, they highlighted it in red, that JRPG thing where you say, Hey, this is important. But then when he actually gave the name of the planet, Puffoon, it just didn't. I don't know. Hmm, indeed. He was once a student of yours, in fact. His name is Kale, although he calls himself Master Kale now. See, I always knew that Kale was the root of all evil. Always gonna cause problems. Not good for you. My sources tell me that he is banded with a crew of villainous pirates who do his dirty work across the solar system. I'm sure you remember him. He seemed a most promising pupil, but I'm afraid to say that he has gone somewhat astray. It may come to blows, and I pray you defend yourself if it does. Kale? With the scruffy hair? But he was such a sensitive boy. What happened? I can't imagine him being any trouble. It's always the sensitive ones. You gotta watch out. Miss Madeline, it's not true, is it? You're not really going to Puffoon, are you? Why? You can't leave us. Teacher, we were listening at the door. We heard everything you discussed. You have to go to Puffoon and fight pirates and evil wizards? This is highly alarming. 
Students, please. This conversation was not meant for your inquisitive ears. Well, then you should have had a thicker door. Teacher, all of that talk about other planets. Are you honestly planning on going into space? Please, I'll be fine. You should be more worried about your tome reports. They're due next week. Haha, uh -huh. tomes, because they read magic, so it's not normal books. I get it. After class that day, Miss Madeline summoned the students to join her in the meditation room. What's gotten into Miss Madeline? Why'd she ask us all to meet her here? I wish I knew, but haven't you noticed that Miss Madeline doesn't seem like herself today? I don't know, I always act pretty normal when I'm ordered to go off and fight space pirates. Yeah. You know what I think? I think it's because of something Pico did. What? Me? They can't prove anything. I mean, I didn't do anything. Lyra, why don't you ask Miss Madeline what's going on? Yeah, Lyra, go ask her. Okay, I guess it's on me. Yeah, and I remember this now. Uh, it's actually easier to move with the stylus because you can use the buttons on your controller, but this is how you run. So, yeah, just makes everything more convenient if I don't have to hold my controller with one hand. Oh, have you been here long, Lyra? Ah, and I see you're all here. Miss Madeline, what's going on? The universe can be a very dodgy place, so it's high time for me to teach you how to defend yourselves. But this lesson isn't about your standard spell flinging, so listen well. The skills I will teach you now are designed for extreme circumstances. Extreme circumstances? That sounds dangerous. And awesome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're teaching us how to defend ourselves, what is, does that mean you're taking us with you to Puffoon? Uh, 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 no, children. I'm going to the Wind Planet alone. I'm afraid I don't have time to explain why that is, so please, I'll have to ask you all to be understanding. Now then, Lyra, step forward, please. Oh no, a mighty robot. Lesson one. Okay, basics first. Tap the skill icon on the upper right. And one thing that I think the DS did very well was it was able to very elegantly represent a lot of information. Like, here we see the layout of the battlefield, and that's has to be on the bottom because these are the things I can actually affect, and I actually control the game. But then the less important information that I might want is up here on top. And so... Bad DS games force you to split your focus between top and bottom all the time, and that's, like, really a pain to actually interact with. But good DS games give you information that you might want up here, and the information you always want at the primary screen. Skills. Uh, I'm good at kicking people, I guess. Now, before you kick, you'll have to decide who gets the boot. You can target any of the glowing enemies. I'll go with that one, I guess. Bam! My, that was impressive. Now let's try our hand at some magic. Shadow die. Lyra can use dark magic. As you increase in level, you will learn other magic. For now, this is all you've got. Choose the spell you want to cast, then choose the target. Bump. If I recall correctly, there are like bonuses for pressing things at the right time. I don't really remember. We'll see. Excellent! Using magic consumes magic points, or MP for short. If you don't have enough MP, you can't cast that spell. You'll want to watch out for that. Oh, but you do recover a little bit of MP throughout the battle, so don't worry too much about it. Items. 
Yeah, I think all of the, like, consumable items in this game are gummies. I don't know why. Maybe everything in this world is delicious, and that's why the architecture looks how it does. Gummy frogs can restore some hit points, or HP, to party members who eat them. When a party member's hit points drop to zero, he is KO'd. Everyone gets KO'd, that's the end of your game. Oh no, not game over. Now for defense. You can reduce damage from enemy attacks if your guard is up, but you'll never win if that's all you do. This command is repeat. You'll do exactly what you did in the last round. Okay, cool. Flee. You can also choose flee. If you think you're going to lose, or just don't want to use MP, try running away. That's all for lesson one. How about a little break? Okay. I've taught you only the absolute basics of combat. Do you feel you understand them well enough? Yes. I don't feel like doing the tutorial again. For your next lesson, I will teach you about rows. Lyra and Chai, step forward. I need to pair with the salamander. Lesson two, let's learn about rows. Lyra is in the front row and Chai is in the back. Your enemies will sometimes be split into two rows too. First, let's talk about the front row. Everything I taught you about tax and magic can be used from the front row. However, some of these attacks, like kick and tail swipe, can't hit enemies in the back row. It's because of the enemies in the front row are in the way. Uh, that one. Bam. Look at the enemies in the back row. They're not glowing, are they? If you want to hit enemies in the back row, you have to take out the enemies on the front line first. If that proves to be difficult, you could lob some magic over the enemies in the front first row to reach them. Physical attacks have to target the closest enemies, but magic can target the back row as well. But hey, you're all wizards, so I expect you to use that magic like it's going out of style. And hit whoever I want. So I'll hit that one. Haha, <laughs> 69. I'm very mature. Now, let's talk about the back row. You can use physical attacks from the back row, so your skills won't... You can't use physical attacks from the back row, so your skills won't work there. Oh, they're grayed out. See? Your skills button has gone dark, so just remember that. You can't use physical attacks from the back row. Ah, but when, you're magic, when you use magic from the back row, well, just try it. Pepperthorn. Oh yeah, they're AoE from the back. Okay. I think it might like do less damage though, because it's all spread out. Yeah, that wasn't that didn't hit very hard. Well, what do you think of that? When you use magic from the back row, you can hit multiple enemies. From the back row, you can focus and then send your magic in a high arc so it doesn't hit your friends in the front. Of course, there's always a drawback. Your magic will be so spread out that the spell's strength gets a bit, little bit diluted. What's true for you is true for your enemies. If they're in the back row, they'll have group attacks too. We'll wrap up lesson two with a little word about switching rows. During battle, you can move members freely between the front and back row. However, getting everyone in position before the battle is the best way to go. Still, if you find you need to move around, just use the move command. Same as everything else, you can just tap the move command, then touch the character where you want to move. See how they just slide right into place? Uh. Oh, okay. It's like a click and drag. I get it. Very good. That concludes lesson two. Drill this information into your young apprentice brains. You must never, ever forget about Rose. If you do, you'll find yourself looking foolish when you can't cast the spell you need at a critical moment. Is that clear? Yep. I think now would be a great time for your third lesson. 
Oh, see, I was going to suggest that the third lesson go back in time before the second one. Lyron Sorbet, please step forward. Lesson three covers your star signs. Okay, I think this is why this game is actually, like, even a little interesting. <laughs> These can have very important effect on you, so listen closely. First, let me tell you a little bit about the relationships between the signs. Tap the sign relationship icon on the bottom right. Uh, this one. Ah, yeah. Everyone has a star sign, even the enemies you fight. Your star sign determines what type of magic you use. For example, Sorbet's sign is water. The diagram here shows what water is strong and weak against. Red stands for fire, green for wood, yellow for wind, brown for earth, and blue for water. White and black stand for light and dark. You do well to keep these in mind while using magic. Now, Sorbet, try using a little magic, why don't you? Hailstorm. Oh, hey, I wonder if this guy's fire is affected. Boom. <laughs> Just one big piece of hail. Okay. See? Impressive, wasn't it? Did you notice how powerful that was? That's because your magic is strong against fire sign targets, Sorbet. Using magic against its weak sign doubles the damage it does. On top of that, they only do half damage to you. That right there is the real difference between magic and physical attacks. Now let's take a look at the actual planets. Tap the astrolog icon on the bottom left. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we can see. There's the sun, the fire and wood planets, the, and the, the wind and water planets, and the earth planet. Okay, that's a very strange sentence. Think of these planets as yourselves. The five colors of light that stream from the sun create the five colored areas. When your planet bathes in its own color of light, the aura of that planet will bolster your power. It's quite easy to see in space, really. That's the power of planets. Trust me, you don't want to forget this. Your planet's aura can give you power. That wraps it up for lesson three. Yeah, because, like, you end up making actually a lot of decisions in this game based on, okay, uh, right now if I had Chai, who is not as powerful, he needs to be using physical attacks and items, and I want to take advantage of, like, the window of power where Sorbet is stronger. And it makes it even more interesting with the different radii, like the planets being further away from the sun, because it means that whoever has the fire magic is going to be powerful for a much less, much shorter period of time, but he'll hit that window more often. Light signs are strong in the day, dark signs are strong at night. Okay, cool. This is very important to remember, although... That is weird, because everyone else is influenced by a planet that they're, like, not even on. Like, a, you're not on the water planet when the water planet gets strong, but light and dark are the only ones influenced by where they happen to be. Well, do you have the hang of this? Yep. Now, that's just the basics, but I'm sure you kids will be just fine. Probably. Hehehe. <laughs> Anyway, it's time for the final exam for this little crash course. All of you must attempt to take down these targets. Oh, interesting. It doesn't have to be three and three. We can divide it up. Sure. Uh, sure. We'll pepper thorn a guy. Okay. That was a lot weaker than when I used the shadow die on someone. Interesting. I bet if I looked, his MP would probably- or his magic or intelligence or whatever the stat is called in this game would probably be a lot lower. And maybe this will just kill them all, because... Oh, interesting. So, it's not just generic deal lots of damage in a big AoE, it's lava spuds. I do like potatoes. Uh, like, the actual type of attack that it makes matters. Like, when Chai did it, it looked like it was just spread out and hitting everything, but she specifically makes four attacks.
Okay, and he only makes three. Alright. Uh, let's see. Wind Talon. We find out what the hell that does. I suppose we don't actually learn much from having people in the front row attack because it's just deal damage to target person. Okay. Only one more. Gravel Pounder. Yeah. Something tells me that we're not going to have all six people from the very beginning of the game, because that's not really how these types of RPGs work. Yay, XP. Oh, I didn't get any money, though. That's sad. Okay. Interesting. Huh, and he didn't get any of that other stuff. He gets lots of HP. Oh. There are a lot of stats. I'm going to have to actually look at the menu to figure out what all these are. And assume it's like defense, physical strength, magic, health. I don't know. I <laughs> Maybe like your total mana pool, speed, how much mana you regenerate? Yeah, we'll have to figure that out later. Interesting how there's so many stats, but a lot of people just didn't actually get any of a lot of them. Had enough? Good. We'll end your lessons for today. However, I've written everything you need to know down in your encyclopedia. If you check your magical navigator in your pocket, you can review it whenever you want. With that information at your fingertips, you'll be all set for galactic fun. Ooh, I like fun. Are you serious? Are we going to travel in space too? So wait, we're all going to space now? Cool. Whoa, ho, ho. no, no. I'll be going alone. Yes, quite alone. And yet, I've got a strange foreshadowy feeling. If anything happens to me, I want you to be prepared. Hmm. What could happen to you? You're Miss Madeline. You know, well, everything. Well, I don't know. Just a weird feeling is all. I don't want to alarm you. The important thing to remember is this. You each have great power. Believe in it. And the very next day, Miss Madeline departed from the Academy. Principal Biscotti wouldn't say a word about where she had gone. He simply hung his head and said this. It should have been me. He looked sad. Oh no. And more than a little worried. Oh no. I think it might be our goal to go save Moe-sensei. I don't know though. Three months later. How much do you want to bet? I'm not going to have any more experience or skills or items. Just nothing actually happened in the last three months. Not here. Yep, she's not here. What's the matter, Pika? Chai? Looking for someone? Well, uh... We, uh, kinda lost Lassie. I don't know what got into her head. She went totally psycho, talking about how she was gonna take off into space or something. Space? What gave her that idea? Lassie must think she can find Miss Madeline on the Wind Planet, right? I mean, it's been, what, three months since anyone saw her, right? So maybe she really is in trouble, and maybe we should do something about it. Hmm. We're all a little worried about Miss Madeline, but how does she expect to get into space? Hey, maybe. What, do you know something? Out with it! Hey, Maka, you know that old prank the seniors play on the freshmen? About there being a rocket ship hidden in the school? Yeah, that was really funny. Ha! Ah! I still remember how the seniors hid it in the necromancer lab, waiting for you to come in there looking for a rocket. Oh man, that was hilarious. Wait a second, are you saying she's actually trying to find that rocket? Whoa, Chai, do you think it really exists? We gotta find it. 
Yeah, let's go stout around and see what we can find. Those two are hopeless on their own. I'd better go along. They think there's a rocket hidden in the school? This is ridiculous. We're going to get left at again. Okay. Right, like they're going to find an operational space rocket hidden in some back room of the school. Yes. Fine. I guess I better come with you. Someone has to talk you out of doing anything stupid and human. Oh yes, I'm sure he's very logical. <laughs> Maka has joined the party. We. Let's see. Uh... Oh, is this just like use magic, I guess? Let's see. Save. Um... Oh, we don't need any of these. I'm curious. Is this just like wireless details? Yeah, probably. Team. I've got a level two Maka. Um, yeah. Okay, I remembered. Oh, it doesn't tell me what these do. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty then. Uh, let's check out the rows and see where everyone is. I think. Lyra seemed magically powerful, so we're gonna put her back here. Maka can be up front with his big fat 231 health. Let's go find something to do, like a rocket. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't appear that I can actually inspect things, so this is mostly running around and talking to people. Ah, have I made a mistake? Now, now, you have no business here, and we can't have you loitering about. Oh, okay. I have been kicked out. Hey, we're done with classes for today. Stop looking so serious and go have some fun. Oh, I find wandering around the school very fun. Class is over. Only bad kids have to stay after class. Well, except for me. I just like to hang out here. Is that weird? Um, little. Detention again? This is so lame. Professor Pistachio is such a villain. Even his laugh is evil. See, this makes me wonder if, like, actually everything in this universe is based around food, and I just don't know as much about food as I wish I did, so I don't recognize them all. Even his laugh is evil. Meh, meh, meh. That laugh bounces around in my head. And my head used to be such a quiet, empty place. Well, I'm sorry. That sounds agonizing. Ah, uh, I wish Miss Madeline would come back. Under Professor Pistachio's iron fist, I'm living in constant fear. How does he expect us to learn when he's so busy slapping people with detentions? Class is over. If I were you, I'd be out having fun. Huh? Me? I've got detention. I couldn't finish Professor Pistachio's exonomics homework. But I don't get it. He never even gave us a sample problem. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's like... I don't go to the location. I click, and then my character just sort of walks until they run into something. So I kind of have to, like... Like grab and go back to get him to stop. Ooh, this control scheme is mostly fluid, but I wish they would just kind of stop moving when I let go. Hey, Lyra, Maka, did you hear? There's a rocket on campus. A rocket! Yeah, we were there, Pico. We gotta find it. Uh, sure, I guess. Hey, no running through the halls. Quick, somebody call a hall monitor. Oh my god. They said that people have fun outside in this world? I don't see that happening. Door won't budge, okay. Storm won't budge, okay. We're quickly going to run out of places to explore. I uh, can't read that. This girl's in the way. I've been hearing weird noises coming from the storage room. It's kind of freaky. Oh, no, she's not in the way. Alrighty then. Uh, Lyra, Sorbet said she saw something suspicious in the storage closet above. She went up to check it out. And why are you still here? Okay. 
We're not supposed to go through the back door. There's secret stuff back there that will get you in huge trouble. I wonder if it's a rocket. Oh, hey Lyra, look at this wall. It looks like you might be able to climb it, huh? I sense traces of previous access. Someone has climbed through here before us. You can climb the wall here. Do you want to climb up? Uh, no, let's look around a bit. I guess I'm used to games where you can just, like, interact with actually everything. But instead, you can't interact with basically anything, so I guess I'm going up the wall. Ooh, spooky, mysterious. Eek! What is that? Hey, Maka! You know what that machine is? Someone must have been performing an experiment here. An experiment? What kind of experiment? Whoa. Oh, it's a face. What is up with that door? I just accessed the school's architectural blueprints and there are no record of this door. How curious. I wonder if there's a record of like this room though. Since apparently no one went back here and we've got like the secret you have to climb it. Uh, it's stair thingy to get here. Oh my god, I wish I could turn up the tech speed in this game. What is the meaning of this? You seek to open the door to the heavens. Oh my god. Yep. I can grant entrance only to those who wield great magic, great, great power, okay. If you seek to pass, show me your power. Touch the symbol of darkness inside your pocket. Okay, yeah, like when I could use magic earlier. You just wonder, like, if I instead used light magic, would we just be stuck? Can't ever proceed? I doubt it. Whoa! Everything is fading to black. We are doomed! No, no, probably not. Now opens the door to the heavens. Yep, yep, you already said that. Okay, move on, please. Please. Yeah! Lyra, you open the door. Yep. Who knew there was such a creepy door in the back of the storage closet? And who put this back here anyway? Well, it's open now. Might as well see who it was guarding, right? Uh, I wonder if I can grab them back in my party. Wow, how exciting. A strange door in a storage closet. Nope, doesn't look like it. Lassie must have come through here too. What do you think? Should we go in? How did she get in there if I am the one with the power of darkness? Maybe the door just like reads you and can tell how what type of magic each person uses. Beep boop bleep. I detect fresh footprints here. Just another of many fine details your frail human eyes cannot perceive. Man, he was programmed to be a jerk, I guess. I bet those are Lassie's footprints. But what is she doing back here? They lead up the ladder. Whoever it was climbed up here. This ladder here? It's really tall. Oh man, that's a lot of rockets. So, that's a rocket? This rocket seems to be in pristine condition. 
It could be space worthy. Whoa, check this place out. What is it? What are all these pointy pod things doing here? No way. The rumors were true? Even after she told us, I half doubted that Miss Madeline was going to Puffoon. I guess she was serious, though. These are space rockets. <laughs> Launch preparation sequence complete. Now opening launch bay doors. Liftoff in T minus 70 seconds. Uh oh. Oh, beautiful split screen cutscenes. <clears throat> oh man. It's all coming down. Did they... Okay, so obviously Miss Madeline took a rocket out of here. If not one of these rockets. So, like, they would have had to have felt this whole launch sequence thing before. But everyone's, like, freaking out and it's like this is the end of the world. Oh, well, at least the rockets are kind of neat. The roof just opened?! Sweet! When you push this thingy, a pretty red light shows sparkles on the screen. Oh boy. I wonder what this lever does. And here we go. At least we didn't get incinerated. That would be sad. What? Uh, yeah. Whoa. I suppose it'll just let me get in a rocket right now, will it? No, I'm probably gonna have to go talk to the principal or something. Oh, you can board the rocket here. You wanna go inside? Yes. I smell adventure. Giga floppy neurobrain online. Real time actuators activated. Hypercoils warmed and toasty. Delicious. Sheesh. Someone gonna tell me what's going on around here or what? Liquid fuel injectors loaded. All systems are go. Pull it. Lift up preparation sequence complete. Pull the lever to initiate launch. Yes. Giga boosters, giga blasting. Liftoff sequence initiated. Lyra? I wonder what would happen if I tried to leave. Like, my first instinct was that I should go ask the principal what to do, and he would say, go, young ones, or something like that. But that's apparently not how this goes. <laughs> oh, well, if the door's stuck, then obviously the only option was to take off and fly very, very far away. Oh, hey, the title. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> She's so distressed. And just generally not a very good pilot, apparently.
Yeah. Look at me flying all smooth. I'm so good at this. Erd. Bump. Okay. Uh, apparently planets can look like that. Off our head, our rocket. Looking remarkably intact for landing like that. This must be well built. This is the rocket you crashed. The whole crashing part wasn't kind to the rocket. Oh no. I I appreciate when games have like a little bit of humor to them. Like when it was saying that uh the thrusters were warm and toasty. Like you don't have to be super serious all the time, but also, I want the humor to come off as genuine, which is a lot harder. Sandstorm is too fierce. You just can't fight through it. Okay, so we're not going that way. If only we had a wind mage who could do things like disperse a sandstorm. Ugh. Oh, water. Get the cobo water from the rocket. This was Lassie's rocket. It's not much of a rocket anymore. Inside the rocket, there is, a, there is some cobo water in a bottle. Would you like to get it? No, I'll just leave it. Come on. You get some cobalt water. We Try again. Give her the water. Gulp, gulp. Ah! Okay, phew. I feel better. Ugh, was it Lyra? Is that you? What are you doing here? For that matter, where is here, anyway? We're not on Kova Maka anymore, are we? I remember zooming through the blackness for a while, and... I remember Kova Maka getting smaller and smaller. Oh, boy. And I remember these other stars all getting bigger and bigger, but that's all I remember. But I'm all okay now, now that I've got you with me, Lyra. We're in this weirdness together now. Yeah! Lassie has joined your party. Maybe not my choice as our first companion, but that's fine. We will make do. wonder if my rocket landed okay. Let's go check it out. No. Aw, oh, dang it. I think it's all busted. This doesn't look like any wind planet to me. What are we gonna do? We're lost in the middle of nowhere in outer space. At least the rocket's helo mat still works. If we run into trouble with any space monsters, we can always come back here and get all patched up. Somehow, the magical healing device in the rocket is still working. Do you want to use it? Uh, sure. Yeah, why not? So the rocket is our Pokemon Center. Got it. See if Lassie can get us out of here. Hear me, wind. Hear my call. Dancing in the sky, shaping in the clouds, whispering to the heavens. Hear my plea and send your gale. Okay. I was a little worried that it wouldn't do anything, but then we got more of an animation. Hopefully this stops the sandstorm. Yeah! Beautiful. Hooray. I did it! I actually did it! The sandstorm's gone! Don't sweat it, Lyra. I know your dark magic will come in handy soon enough. Oh wow, making me feel like the reject. Oh my. There's a big claw. Is, oh, like a beetle, I guess? Okay, I was expecting a crab, but okay. Ah! Oh, if I were smart, I would have checked the stats of my party members first and figured out how everyone should be fighting. Okay, let's see. We got our astrolabe thingy. Um, I'm guessing that this is the wind planet? Yeah, because... The far out was the earth that it was lighting up over here. So we got a while before she's really adept at magic, although I'm powered up right now. This doesn't tell us anything. We don't know. I don't know if, like, everyone on a planet is aligned with that element, like if this guy's necessarily wind. Um, and I don't know a good way to find out, but let's conserve her MP until... Oh. 
Well, it tells us. So I guess instead we will look at the thing. And wind is good against earth, so we're not going to conserve MP. We're going to start wailing on somebody. Hmm. Now, being in the back doesn't really do anything, because spreading out my magic around one target doesn't matter. Uh, I don't know if this uses my whole turn, but let's find out. It does. Unfortunate. Oh, well. Ant lion. Oh no! Oh, that's fine. We got lots of health. The game probably wants me to be a little more conservative, but we are right by my spaceship, which can give me all my MP back. So I don't really see a reason not to just unload and make the fight go faster. Yeah! Oh, man. That's funny that, like, because I'm powered up right now, I am dealing more damage than Lassie, even though she's super effective. So it looks like playing into the signs is really, really important. Hmm. Wish there was a way to tell how much health he had, because then you can figure things out, like, when I move forward, if I'm dealing... 50-60% more damage per hit, is that worth it compared to wasting a whole turn moving forward? I don't really know. Yeah. This guy really just... Let's see. How far do these move? Okay. Uh, I should have made a note about like how much they're moving a turn. Okay, so on this turn, we're almost into the green zone on the wind planet. And we use another wind talent. And he's dead. So making note of it did not help. Okay, I got a healing thingy, and we got some experience. Yay. Wow, did you see how powerful you were in that fight? That was incredible, Lyra. I bet that's what Miss Madeline said when she was... I bet that's what Miss Madeline was talking about when she said that the power of the planets would help us. Yep. This was Lassie's rocket. It's not much of a rocket anymore. Blah, blah, blah. Use it, yes. Yay. Uh, so I wanted to keep these episodes rather short, and that intro sequence was really long. So I think I'm actually going to call it uh, for this first episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed Magical Star Sign. Uh, the gameplay was actually pretty good, even if a lot of this was really cheesy. So I think I am going to keep playing this. Yeah, 48 minutes. That's plenty. Uh, and so I will see you next time.